Now we all saw the Halo Infinite technical preview live stream and it was great, but they didn't describe everything that we actually saw on screen. Things like grenade hit markers, aim assist for mouse, as well as the thruster returning from Halo 5. We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So the Halo news scene right now is just absolutely crazy. Now I'm sure most of us got a chance to watch the live stream or at least seen some things online about it. I didn't want to regurgitate everything that we saw or that they posted up in the blog update that they had corresponding along with that live stream because it just kind of reiterates everything we just saw. But in this video, I'm going to bring up six different things that were either confirmed by 343 or we saw within the gameplay itself that we just were not mentioned. So if you guys like these Halo news and informational videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to update with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. Now I've been seeing many common questions about the fighting process, about what we can do outside of it, and Unishek goes out to Twitter and confirms that yes, you can stream and make content on this flight. It says that the time this flight will drop will be later Thursday afternoon to get some sleep so then you get well rested to play plenty of Halo and download instructions will arrive tomorrow when everything goes live. So I'm going to try my best to get in a live stream. I'm actually currently moving from my apartment into my house right now so life is just completely torn upside down right now. I'm still trying to get out these videos for you guys. But trust me as soon as the flight does go live I'll put up on my community page here on YouTube letting you guys know when the flight is able to be downloaded. And the best way to catch those community posts is by subscribing to the channel. So hope to see you guys around if anyone here is new to the channel. And I'm going to be breaking down so many different aspects of this game. I'm barely even going to be able to play because I'm going to be going into all the details and find all the nitty gritty things that we want to know about Halo. Like how do these weapons perform? What are the best settings? What's the best options for this game and stuff like that? I'm going to break it all down for you guys. The second thing that we saw today, guys, was that grenade hit markers are returning in Halo Infinite. Now this might upset a lot of people. This initially upset me as well as I feel like grenade hit markers provide too much information for players within Halo to where it really affects the gameplay of how people actually utilize grenades, have different types of awareness and how having just a simple indicator on your UI when you do evil damage really affects the gameplay and player mentality. Well, Sandbox lead for Halo Infinite, Quinn Del Hoyo, brought up the most epic compromise ever, saying that grenade hit markers will only be available in social slash unranked experiences for Halo Infinite. They will be turned off for competitive playing settings. I am so absolutely down for this compromise here. I think for the social settings, yeah, sure, you can have grenade hit markers. It's not totally balanced, but that's the kind of experience when it plays social and unranked modes. They're not really trying to get the most balanced experience possible. It's more just kind of like, having fair starts and then just kind of jumping in and having fun with the game and not taking it so seriously. That's what ranked is for. And I'm so glad to see that grenade hit markers will not be in ranked. Like I mentioned earlier, having hit markers for when you deal damage with grenades greatly affects how people utilize those grenades because they sometimes use them as just like little sonars to see if they throw something in to get like a little ding of a hit marker. Well, then you know someone's behind a corner when you had no idea they were there. Yeah, I've definitely done this plenty of times where I just throw grenades to see if I get hit markers in case someone's there. So for the fact that they will not be in ranked modes is such a huge relief when it comes to the gameplay of it. Just putting more reliance on your team, teamwork, and your own personal awareness when it comes to playing ranked. I'm so excited about this and I'm so glad this is probably like the best compromise we could possibly have. Number three on this list, does it look like Mouse has like aim assist now within Halo Infinite? Better user Jesshawk36 said this saying, Mouse magnetism sounds like it could do a lot to balance mouse and keyboard versus controller but it sounds like it'd be too much of a step towards mouse and keyboard dominance curious to see how it works in the flight also what is step jump the description mentions reducing jump height but the rest is blocked enable mouse magnetism again just to me sounds like aim assist for the mouse. This could be something that was created from the direct feedback from playing Halo MCC on PC where you have mouse and keyboard versus controller and for the most part 
controller dominates the MCC because of aim assist and how just the way those classic Halo games were built from the ground up to be played well on the controller with not really mouse and keyboard in mind. And the biggest issue cited for mouse and keyboard users is that controller players get aim assist and when you're having those micro strafing left and right kind of out strafing maneuvers, that's very difficult to stay on target because most mouse and keyboard shooter games like Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, stuff like that, you're mainly standing still behind cover when shooting. In Halo, it's very different. You're constantly in motion, strafing left and right. Your target's always moving on screen. So it can be very difficult to stay on target when it comes to Halo on mouse and keyboard with no aim assist. So will mouse and keyboard like get the same amount of aim assist as controller? I doubt that. That's, that seems a little too ridiculous, but we won't know until we actually get a chance to play and I definitely will test this out guys. Number four on this list guys, it looks like the thrust pack in some capacity is coming back within Halo Infinite. A freeze frame of some of the settings of mouse and keyboard within the flight showcased here that there is a equip grapple shot, equip drop wall, equip threat sensor, which you've all seen three of these before, but it also says equip thruster. So it looks like thrust is coming back from Halo 5 in Halo Infinite, but it's gonna be an equipment you can utilize for how drastic the thrust is going to be is it going to be just like halo 5 is it going to be unlimited uses limited uses again we'll just have to wait and see how it actually plays out me personally i actually liked thrust in halo 5 and also kind of a little bit in halo 4 as well i think it allowed for really cool maneuvers and outplaying abilities and if you can use this as a piece of equipment and maybe if it showcases to the player you're fighting against that that person has the thruster pack so they can know at any moment that the player that they're shooting could either suddenly dart left or right or above them or something like that. That would be really good information to know as a person who's maybe attacking somebody who has the thruster equipment attached on them. We've seen this with the repulsor it has a bit of like an arm wrist kind of thing with it. And when you're holding onto the overshield, it has a bit of a golden kind of tail behind you letting you know that that player has overshield and can use it at any moment. Number five on this list guys, is that there is no player collision within social match main games of Halo Infinite. This clip here posted on Reddit showcases a player who actually runs through another one right here and there is no collision whatsoever. Of course we know that there has always been player collision within Halo so this is gonna be the first time we've seen no player collision. This one I'm kind of okay with it being in the social side of things but if this is gonna be like a ranked feature I would definitely would not like to see that happen and I'm pretty sure it'd be like a simple toggle on or off option when it comes to player collision within Halo Infinite. I think for the social modes, it's fine to have no player, you know, friendly player collision, but obviously with the rank modes, you really want to see that be added into the game to have just much more consequences to player movement and teamwork. And so then in case you run into someone body blocking you, trying to go around a corner, it just would be something that would enhance teamwork a lot more. And so I think for ranked, we probably will see a player collision. That's my guess. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. And lastly, number six is a bit of confirmation about armor cores and customization for Halo Infinite. Graphic designer for 343 and Microsoft, Pixelflare, said that he confirms that there were going to be three armor cores for the launch of Halo Infinite. And we actually already know these three armor cores. One of them is going to be the Mark 7 armor set. Funny thing is, I recently checked out the Halo Infinite page here for Xbox, and previously they said Mark 7 Olympus. So there's gonna be different versions of Mark 7 armor sets. I mean, I would believe there would be, but this is all now it just says Mark 7 for some reason. There's gonna be one armor core that we're gonna have at launch. Another armor core we're gonna have is the Mark 5 Reach style armor set as well. This was also recently changed on the Xbox Halo Infinite website where it said Mark 5 Reach. Now it just says Mark 5. And that third armor core being the Yoroi armor set as well. This is gonna be a completely different core. They're gonna call this a armor core fracture, where basically it's an like armor core that 343 wants to create, but doesn't exactly fit into like the lore and thematic styles of Halo Infinite, but it's something pretty cool that people wanna play around with. And since the Yoroi armor is gonna be its own core, that means it's gonna have very different kind of permutations of armor sets for the same armor core. So you can see right here, this image does a great job of showcasing, which I did showcase within the live stream of all the different armor permutations that you can add to your Yoroi armor core for the armor core fracture that we're gonna have for the season one 
or Halo Infinite and I tell you a lot of these look pretty freaking awesome. So if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from it recently, check out the playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news videos I'll be uploading daily about. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.